Polish writer Andrzej Sapkowski published his first short story titled Wiedźmin, or The Witcher, in 1986. 33 years, 7 books, 3 video games, and one crappy Polish movie later, The Witcher and its protagonist, Geralt of Rivia, are practically household names. Or at least they will be when the Netflix Witcher series premieres later this year. Find Geralt of Rivia. Geralt of Rivia is a highly trained, mutated, and magically enhanced slayer for hire called a Witcher, who hunts monsters in a unique fantasy universe created by its author, Sapkowski. Like other contemporary fantasy novels, the Witcher universe draws from earlier examples of the fantasy genre, and even earlier than this, ancient myths and folklore. However, unlike some of the more popular titles of the fantasy genre, the Witcher series doesn't only draw from Norse, Germanic, or Western European mythology. It also draws heavily from Eastern European mythology, and this adds a distinctly Slavic flavor to his fantasy series, as evidenced by the traditional Slavic folk creatures who appear in the Witcher. In this video, I will dive into the real-world mythology or folklore behind six creatures that appear in the Witcher games or novel series, and hopefully also the upcoming Netflix series. But before I do, I should clarify that the Witcher draws not only from Slavic folklore, but also Germanic, Celtic, and Greek folklore among others. And to make things more complicated, there is often a lot of overlapping and adaptation between the mythology of different cultures. For the purposes of this video, I will do my best to stay on the Slavic side of the Witcher bestiary, because I find that aspect of the fantasy series more interesting. If you haven't read, watched, or played The Witcher, this video will spoil the appearance of these creatures in the story, but I won't really spoil the plot of The Witcher books or games, aside from a few details on the creature and their basic role in the story. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first creature I will cover is the first creature that appears in the Witcher short story compilation, The Last Wish, and the intro to the first Witcher game. I'm talking about the Striga. It was enough to spend the night with the princess, dusk till dawn. If only she were not a deadly beast. A Striga. In the Witcher books and games, the Striga is a princess cursed before birth to become a sharp-toothed, long-armed, demonic creature that rises from its crypt each full moon to feast on human blood. The term Striga is derived from the Latin striges, which is a creature of ancient Greek myth a human woman or witch transformed into a bloodthirsty bird. In fact, this term influenced the Italian word for witch, strega. In Slavic folklore, the striga has several variations depending on the region. The Romanian strigoi is a class of vampire, a creature that returns from the grave to feast on the blood of mortals. The strigoi have the ability to transform into various animals or become invisible, characteristics that were later adapted by Bram Stoker for his novel Dracula. He can also control the meaner things of life, the bat, the rodent, the wolf. He can appear as mist, as vapor, as fog, and vanish at will. Then there is the Albanian Striga, a vampiric witch thought to drink the blood of children at night before transforming into an insect and escaping out the window. These other local variations aside, the Witcher Striga is likely most influenced by mythology from the author's home country. The Polish Striga is a female demon, again similar to a vampire, but one thought to be the result of witchcraft. A human child born with two souls, two hearts, and two sets of teeth, or a full set of teeth at birth, was thought to be a Striga. The child's human soul soon died, but the second soul returned from the grave to feast on blood, sometimes attacking travelers in the form of an owl, much like the earlier Greek version of this creature. Second on the list are the Witcher version of the creature from the Black Lagoon. In the Witcher books and games, the Vadianoi are intelligent humanoid sea creatures who inhabit the underwater cities of the Great Sea. Many cultures tell tales of creatures that resemble the Vadianoi. For example, the Japanese water sprites called Kappa, or German river mermaids called the Nixa. However, the Witcher's Vadianoi are adapted from creatures of the same name in Slavic folklore. In fact, their name comes from the proto-Slavic word for water, voda. Much like their video game counterparts, the Vadianoi of folklore are male water spirits who inhabit lakes, rivers, or other bodies of water. They are said to resemble an old man with webbed hands and feet, a long green beard, and the face of a frog. The Vadianoi prefer to chill out on partially sunken logs and will alert you of their presence with a loud splashing noise, or you may notice their glowing eyes. 
Vadinoi are often depicted as mischievous or neutral, but can sometimes be malevolent. For example, they are credited as the cause of drownings, although this aspect more resembles the drowners in the Witcher games. The Witcher's drowners, however, are not inspired by Vadinoi, but rather the Topielik, another more malevolent water spirit in Slavic folklore thought to be the vengeful ghosts of those who died by drowning. Wraiths and other ghostly creatures tend to appear at night, or are found in dark places, but in the case of the next creature, it is exactly the opposite. Noon wraiths are creatures that Geralt encounters several times in the Witcher games. They are female spirits with a corpse-like appearance, similar to night wraiths, however they only appear when the sun is at its highest. The noon wraiths will dance in the fields, luring mortals who watch to dance among them until they die from exhaustion. In Slavic folklore, these spirits have different names depending on the culture, but are often translated as Lady Midday, Noon Wraith, or Noon Witch in English. The noon witch appears on the hottest days of summer, and will torment those who work in the fields causing madness and heat stroke. The Noon Witch may appear as a young woman, old hag, or even a whirling cloud of dust, but in human form she usually dresses in white and carries a scythe or shears, which she will use to decapitate workers who fail to answer her questions or riddles. One of the more well-known references to the Noon Witch in literature appears in the classic Czech collection of ballads, Kitais, a book that also refers to the Czech version of the Vodianoi, the Vodnik. Staying in the category of witches, the Witcher books and games feature three very creepy witchy women. I'm of course talking about the crones. The three ladies of the wood, Rues, Weves, and Wispis, are older than most of the other races in the Witcher universe, and possess dark, powerful magic, which they use to manipulate or control those who cross their path, or enter the forest surrounding their home, Crookback Bog. The crones are influenced by myths and folklore from a number of sources. For example, the three Norns of Norse mythology who guard the Well of Fate, or the three Mori of Greek mythology who weave mankind's fate as threads. In fact, many cultures have a version of three sisters who control mankind's fate, including Slavic versions like the Polish Rodzanice, three spirits thought to control a person's fate from cradle to grave. Like the Sisters of Fate in mythology, the Witcher Bestiary describes the crones as possessing the ability to predict the future and twist the threads of human lives. However, given the Slavic influence on the Witcher series, the crones are likely also influenced by the notorious witch of Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is an old witch who lives deep in the forest, in a house that stands on chicken legs, surrounded by a fence made of human bones. Whenever Miss Yaga decides to pop out for a bit of human flesh, she does so by flying through the air in a mortar, while using a pestle or broom as an air paddle. In some tales the witch is malicious, while in others she is more neutral. But always she is dangerous and possesses powerful dark magic. What? What do you mean, the woods? The first known reference to Baba Yaga in literature appeared in 1755 in the Rossiskia Grammatica, in which Baba Yaga is listed among the old Slavic deities. While Baba Yaga is usually solo, she is sometimes depicted as a trio of sisters, like the aforementioned Fates or Crones. For example, there are three Baba Yagas in Alexander Afanafya's 19th century version of the tale, The Maiden Tsar. Next, we look into a mysterious creature in the Witcher games and books that haunts the forests, acting as a guardian to the wood against all those that would trespass against it. In the Witcher 3 video game, the Leshen appears as a tall, thin, humanoid creature adorned with tattered bits and pieces of the forest over its bark-like skin, and sporting a helm made from the horned skull of a stag. In the Witcher, the Leshen is said to be a spirit manifested by the forest itself, and thus it will kill those that disrespect its domain. The Witcher's Leshen is adapted from a creature of Slavic folklore called the Leshy. Like its video game counterpart, the Leshy is a guardian of the forest. The Leshy is usually depicted as a large humanoid creature covered in foliage with a long bushy beard and bright green eyes. Because of its size and natural camouflage, the creature is often mistaken for a tree. The tree is talking. Tree? I am no tree. 
the less she's size may change. It will become gradually smaller the further it travels from the heart of the forest, eventually shrinking to a tiny creature at the forest's edge. The Leshy may also be surrounded by packs of wolves and bears, or by its wife and children. A traveler will typically encounter the Leshy when they have become completely lost in the forest, at which point the Leshy may lead them further astray by imitating voices known to the traveler, or it may transform itself into the likeness of plants or animals, further confusing the traveler. At times the Leshy is a malicious entity, while other times it is merely mischievous or possibly even helpful. For example, it may provide protection to farmers who befriend it. One of the best known references to the Leshy is found in Alexander Pushkin's poem Ruslan and Lyudmila. Among the most memorable villains of the Witcher games and book series are the spectral riders known as the Wild Hunt, and specifically their leader, the King of the Wild Hunt, Aridin. The Wild Hunt resemble a party of mounted wraiths or spirits who manifest suddenly in the sky before attacking or abducting mortals and quickly vanishing once again. But spoilers are imminent. Just gonna give you a second right now. They are in fact elves from another world who travel to the Northern Kingdoms for the purpose of raiding and taking slaves. That is until the third Witcher game when their leader plans to abduct Ciri for another purpose that I won't spoil now. The Wild Hunt's name and basic characteristics are taken in part from the Wild Hunt of Germanic and Norse mythology. In these sources, the Wild Hunt are a party of spectral hunters who appear usually in the skies, then ride by in wild pursuit of some prey. The Wild Hunt is also thought to be the inspiration for ritualized hunts or rites in the Old Norse religion. In Norse mythology, the Wild Hunt is led by Odin, while in the Anglo-Saxon variation of the myth, the party is led by Hearn the Hunter. Do you fear me, boy? Why should I fear you? You're a man. I am your destiny. Her. Her the hunter. However, neither of these figures really resemble Aridin, the king of the wild hunt in the Witcher games and novels. And in fact, I believe the depiction of Aridin in the games owes much more to a notorious figure in Slavic folklore, that is Kashe the Immortal or the Deathless. There are giant crab-like creatures in the Witcher games called Kashe, but aside from their name, they don't resemble the archetypal villain at all. Aridin, on the other hand, does share a few similarities. In the tale The Death of Kashe the Deathless, the beautiful princess Marya is kidnapped by the old skeletal sorcerer Kashe. Marya's husband, Prince Ivan, attempts to rescue her, but discovers the sorcerer cannot be killed directly because his soul is hidden. Eventually, Ivan finds Kashe's soul in a needle, in an egg, in a duck, in a chest guarded by a dragon, and destroys the needle, thus killing Kashe. And by the way, this tale is probably the inspiration for the Horcruxes in Harry Potter. Like Kashe, Erdin kidnaps Geralt's love interest, Yennefer. But for me, the bigger hint of Kashe's influence on Erdin is simply Erdin's appearance. Kashe is usually portrayed as a skeletal figure with a horn-like crown. When fully armored, Erdin definitely has a similar look, so it seems likely Sapkowski or the game's designers were at least in part inspired by the evil sorcerer of Slavic folklore. You dare to oppose me? I sense your weakness as your life seeps from your wounds. There are a lot of creatures that borrow from a lot of mythology in the Witcher games and books, but the six I just covered are the only ones I'm going to cover in this video. However, if you'd like me to do a follow-up video, please let me know what creatures or aspects of the Witcher I should cover in the comments below. For this video, I wanted to focus on creatures that have a specifically Slavic background, because that is a fascinating aspect of the Witcher universe, and an influence that I hope carries over to the upcoming Netflix series. If Netflix really does intend to do the Witcher novels justice, the Slavicness is an essential element they can't overlook, even though that's not a word. Please let me know if I missed something or got something wrong in this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more breakdowns of the background and mythology behind your favorite stories in all forms. Until next time, Nazdrovia.